All right, so here we are back at number 21. And the question is, could you find the arc length S? Do you know how to find that? So for arc length, I need to know the formula is the radius times the angle in radians. So for this arc, the radius is 10, but the angle is 30 degrees. So I have to change it to radians by going pi over 180 and then use my calculator to finish it and to three decimal places. And the arc length is approximately 5.236, and that's in yards. 22. The minute hand of a clock is six inches long. How far does the tip of the minute hand move in 45 minutes? And then round to two decimal places if necessary. So if you think of the clock and the minute hand, so you have an hour hand and a minute hand, Think of the minute hand, and when you think of it as a circle, I want you to know the minute hand, the length of that is the radius. So in this case, the radius is six inches. The tricky part is 45 minutes, what angle that is. So if you think of 45 minutes on a clock, 45 minutes, can you tell me what angle that swept through? And you might want to think this, that a whole circle is 360. And what you want is three quarters of that. So what's 360 divided by, or 360 times three quarters of it? Or you can think of it as 45 out of 60. So if I go 360 times 45 out of 60, what you'll find is the exact angle there is 200 and 70 degrees. That's the angle it goes through in 45 minutes. So the formula to know the distance it traveled is what the arc length is. And the arc length then would be 6, and then we'd have to change 270 to radians. You know the unit circle. So you can go 270 pi over 180, or just know it's 3 pi over 2. That's the same as 270. And then use your calculator. So 6 times 3 pi divided by 2, and to two decimal places, it would be 28.27 inches. That's how far the minute hand moved in 45 minutes. Twenty-three. How about sector area? What's that formula? So that's one-half r squared theta. So in this example, the radius is 4, and the angle is already in Radians, so it's perfect, it's over. Type that in, 0.5 times 4 squared times pi divided by 3, and you get the answer 8.38, three decimal places, 0.37, and then it goes up to an 8. And that's in feet squared, if you round it correctly. 24. The blade of a windshield wiper sweeps out in an angle of 135 degrees in one cycle. The base of the blade is 12 inches, and the pivot point and the tip is 32 inches. What area does the wiper cover in one cycle? So you need to have this understanding. So when you think of a wiper blade, can you think of the wiper blade in terms of the area that it's covering, kind of like that. I know it's a bad picture of a circle like that. But I want you to know that the wiper blade itself is 12 inches, and from the pivot point to the top is 32 inches. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, sorry, the base of the blade is 12 inches from the pivot point. So this part down here is 12 inches. Well, this whole part from here from the pivot point to the top is 32. So what I need to do first is to find the length of the blade. And that length of the blade is going to be your radius. And to find it, you're just going to subtract. So 32 take away 12. The length of the blade is 20 inches. And that's going to be your radius. 
the angle that's given is 135 degrees. And you just have to use the sector formula to then find the area it wipes out in one cycle. So that's one half times the radius squared times the angle in radians. So I need to go pi over 180. And that's it. So 0.5 times 20 squared times 135 pi divided by 180. And the answer is 471.238. It says to 0.1, so that would be 0.2. And that's in inches squared. All right, turn the page. <clears throat> Number 25, can you convert to radians? Of course you can. So multiply it by pi over 180. You can use your calculator or your brain. So reduce it down. So that's like 8 pi over 18. So it would be 4 pi over 9. Can you convert the other way? So then go 180 over pi. <clears throat> the pi's uh, divide out. 6 times 180 divided by 5. So that's 216 degrees. Can you draw an angle? So negative 3 pi over 4. You might want to convert it, and that's okay. So that's 180 over pi. If you do that, that's negative 135 degrees. So to draw this angle, negative 135 recognize what quadrant it would be in. It's going clockwise, and it's in the middle of quadrant 3. So this angle is negative 135, or negative 3 pi over 4. For 520, recognize that this is more than one rotation. So when I subtract 360, I'm finding the co-terminal angle. So when I subtract it, I get 160. That's the one I'm going to draw. So when I think of 160, that's in quadrant number 2, and it's pretty close to 180. So I'm going to draw it pretty close to 180. And then when I draw this, I have to go counterclockwise, and I have to go one rotation past for 520. So I need to go one rotation and then continue go 160 to then draw the angle. 29. If I give you a point, could you find the trig value that goes with that point? So I need to know the definition of tangent to using a point. So the definition of tangent is just y over x. So in this situation, the y value is negative 2, the x is 3, and the answer is negative 2 over 3. For secant, I need to know it's the reciprocal of cosine. Now cosine with a point would be x over r. So in this situation, it would be the radius over x. Know that this is not a point on the unit circle, so the radius is not 1. So I actually have to find the radius. So the radius is the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. So that means the radius is root 10, and the x-coordinate is negative 3, and then you have your answer. Cotangent, by definition, is x divided by y. So the x-coordinate divided by the y-coordinate, and you have your answer. The next question is, do you know your unit circle? So what's the value of cosine at 5 pi over 3? So what do I think through? So 3 is in the denominator. That means it's a 60-degree reference angle. Then I think cosine, what's the rule? That's the x-coordinate. What is the x-coordinate for 60 degrees? And the answer is 1 half. And then the last thing I think about is the quadrant. What quadrant is 5 pi over 3 in? And the answer is it's in quadrant number 4. And when it's in quadrant number 4, all students take, is, calcul is uh, cosine positive or negative in quadrant number 4? So the answer here is just 1 half. <coughs> Let's try this again. 330. What do I need to think about? What's the reference angle? So 360 take away 330. It's a 30 degree reference angle. Then I think through, sine goes with the y coordinate. What's the y coordinate at 30? And again, it's 1 half. What quadrant are we in? 
For 330, we're in quadrant 4. And using this understanding, sine is negative in quadrant 4. So the answer is going to be negative a half. 210. Reference angle. So I'm going to use 180 for the reference angle. 210 take away 180 is 30. I need to know the rule for cotangent, x over y. At 30 degrees, I need both. So at 30 degrees, the x coordinate is root 3 over 2, and the y coordinate is 1 half. So when I divide them, the 2's divide out, and it's root 3 over 1, or just root 3. The last thing I need to think through is, what quadrant are we in? So we're in quadrant number 3. And in quadrant number three, tangent and cotangent are positive. So the answer is positive root three. 35. Name the quadrant in which the angle lies in. So this is this understanding of all students take calculus and then break it down. So for number 35, secant is negative. So it's not in quadrant 4 and not in quadrant uh, 1. Tangent is negative, so it's not in quadrant 3. So what are we left with? This must be in quadrant 2. So I'm going to do that again here. I'll do it below here. And just go backwards here. Cosine is negative. So that means it's not in quadrant 1 and not in quadrant 4. Cosecant is negative. Well, cosecant goes with sine, so it can't be in quadrant 2. So the only quadrant it could be in is quadrant number three, where they're both negative. Turn the page. So which of the following trig values are negative? So just because it's a negative angle doesn't mean it's negative. So the understanding is the quadrant first. So I'll look at the first one. Negative 292. What quadrant is it in if I go... Uh, clockwise. And if I go clockwise, this one is in quadrant 1. And in quadrant 1, everything is positive. So it can't be negative. Look at the next one, negative 193. What quadrant is that in? Well, that's in quadrant number 2. And in quadrant number 2, tangent's negative. So this one is negative. Negative 207, also in quadrant number 2, going clockwise. Cosine there is negative. And again, if you want to, again, you can go all students take calculus to know that in quadrant number two, tangent and cosine, only sine is positive there, and it's reciprocal. 222, now we're going in a positive direction, so it's maybe a little easier. 222, positive angle, is in quadrant number three. And in quadrant number three, cotangent is positive because it goes with tangent. So what are the only two that give you a negative answer? And there they are, two and three. 38. Can you find the exact value of the trig function with the information given? So sine is negative two over five. I, I'm going to draw a right triangle. I'm going to label theta, and I need to know my right triangle definitions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The negative part we'll take care of with the quadrant. We'll do that at the end. <clears throat> Find the missing side. 25 take away 4 is 21, so it's root 21. So what's secant then? So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's hypotenuse over the adjacent side. Next, I need to know the quadrant. So if I set up something to help me understand, sine is negative, so it can't be in one or two. Tangent is positive, so it must be in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, secant is negative. So this is a negative answer. Then I'll multiply top and bottom by root 21 to get my answer. And you get negative five root 21 over 21. All right, this will be the last one for this video. Then we'll do graphing on another one. What's the value of tangent at negative 8 over 15? So again, I'm going to draw a right triangle. 
I'm going to label it opposite over adjacent. I'm not worried about the negative sign yet. Uh, this is the square root of 15 squared plus 8 squared. That's 17. So that's 225 plus 64. That's 289, and the square root of 289 is 17. Cosine, using this triangle, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Then, what quadrant are we in for the angle? So all students here, 270 to 360, we're in this quadrant right here, 270 to 360. Cosine's positive there. So the answer is positive 15 over 17. All right, so the next video, we'll start with graphing. Mr. G Math, over now.